immersively. Uh, and as was mentioned, the, the, the entrepreneurs need more than money. They need money at the right time. They need guidance, they need connections. It's, it's much more than money that makes a company work. And I've seen that because before I became involved in, uh, as a founder of the fund, I, I moved from 36 years in the charitable and educational sector into working with companies as an advisor to executive teams and boards, about 25 different companies. Most of those were in the life sciences, but some in other sectors. And so I've seen a lot of things that work and don't work. And I've been involved as a board chair, even of a public company, and I've removed founders when they weren't the right fit to take the company to the next stage. Oh, that's terrible. So, so that's, a, that's a tough position. Sometimes it works really well. I'm still friends with that gentleman. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it's a challenge. I, my challenge is more money, because I didn't set out to run a fund, and I don't have, I have some wonderful uh, limited partners who've invested multiple times. They're uh, high net worth individuals, they're family officers. Um, but, um, but the deal flow is not the issue for me, but partly that may be because I'm not limited, I, I'm not really focused just on blue technologies, either on land or in the ocean. Um, and, and so as a consequence, I'm working right now in one way or another with about 60 companies and constantly have uh, other companies that are referred to me. Uh, so, so that's not so much the challenge for me. It's whether those companies are from the late seed stage to the early growth stage and really ready to scale through that filter that they have to be willing and able to make a difference for. So it doesn't sound like you're having a deal flow issue. It's not deal In flow. In your case, it's just are the companies prepared? Are they, you know, are you surrounding them with the right people um, and helping them address the right markets in the right place? And how could we best help them, and how do they fit together? By the way, clusters can help with this, just so you know. So, Orlando, um, obviously Rockefeller is a rather well-known name. So perhaps your deal flow is bigger. You know, I know you're focused on public companies at this moment, but you get lots of knocks on the door, people saying, hey, Rockefeller, and we hear you're focused on the tech. Um, so yeah, so uh, uh, the one thing that's worth noting here is that Rockefeller and Company was born out of the family office. Um, a little less than a year ago, we were we were acquired. We're now Rockefeller Capital. But basically, the, what that means is that we have a number of new investors into the firm, and they're looking to rapidly grow the firm. They're wanting to grow now the asset management division, where I work in, but also the wealth advisory. Uh, the family's still involved. Um, they still control about a third of the, of the firm. But really, where we are now, um, as a firm is really thinking about how to think about what the right areas for us are in terms of growth. And so the, uh, the Rock Polar Ocean strategy has developed over time really kind of within this small world of kind of working individuals and foundations. And right now we're thinking about how to develop this further. You know, we really have developed a deep base of knowledge on some of the areas that we um, that we're comfortable in within the blue economy. So it's only it's very compatible for us to think about uh, private equity. Uh, our our clients are asking 